Hi, welcome to week seven of the monologue project. This week we have um, Isabel from Bull, written by Mike Bartlett. Uh, another long one. Uh, uh, what's interesting about this one, A, I just, <laughs> I love bitchy people so much. Um, but despite that, um, the really interesting structure of it is there's very little punctuation. Um, so you really do have the opportunity when you have a piece like this to sort of go, no, I want this section to go together. I want this section to go together. Um, I do recall having read somewhere that um, Christopher Walken actually does this with his scripts. He's, he'll take a script and he'll take all the punctuation and he'll toss it away and then recreate it sort of in his own image, which is how he gets that cool cadence. So that happens with this one, so that's kind of fun. And uh, I have an audition that I need to submit for this week, and I'm actually going to steal part of this one for that audition. So there you go. So that I think that's kind of proof in the pudding. So um, this week it is Bull. Uh, written by Mark, <laughs> see I can't even talk, uh, well, written by Mike Bartlett, Isabel. I feel really sorry for you. No, Thomas, I, I feel really sorry. I do. I promise I do. I'm feeling sorry right now. You have a kid, don't you? You do. I know you do. So... So you don't have to hide it. You have a kid. Yeah. Tough. What's its name? Is it Harry? It is, Harry. I know it is. Do you know how I know? Because this one time when we left work, I was walking behind you and you walked all the way down the road and I could see you in front of me and I saw you meet this woman in a coffee shop. It wasn't a nice coffee shop. I was surprised you went into it. It was a a costa or something not even a good one a shit costa and i watched you meet this woman and she had a little toddling thing and i waited and i saw you go to the loo and then i ran in and i said oh i was hoping to catch you and i pretended i was in a hurry and i had a little chat with um marion is that her name your ex mm -hmm. and she told me about Harry. And I said I was a colleague and you were taking ages in the toilet. Actually, we talked about it. We didn't know what you were up to in there, but it meant that we had a good talk about you. And in the end, when you still didn't come out, I said I needed to dash and I'd catch you tomorrow instead. But that conversation with her, that gave me a lot of crucial information, which I've always known. When you try to hide things or lie or whatever, I have always known about your life, things that you don't know, I know. I know that you have to pay Mary in a certain amount every month. And when she hears that you are out of work, her low estimation of you will drop even further. It will, I promise. She won't be surprised. That's a really tragic thing for you. She won't be like, Oh my God, you lost your job. Oh my God. She'll be like, well, yeah, of course he lost his job, fucking retard. Good thing I got out while I could. Better not let Harry see him too much. Don't want Harry to grow up in the distorted, disabled image of his fucking drip drip of a father. I expect that's what she'll think. It's tough, isn't it? Life. It's a lot more difficult than you imagined it would be, huh? I mean, I'm sure you thought it was difficult, but that through sheer hard work and practice and training and long hours and inspiration, and in your case, perspiration, you would come through and in the end succeed because you thought that despite everything it was, well, in this country at least, a meritocracy. 
and that fair play and honest, transparent behavior at work would be rewarded in the end. That bad people like me would fall to the wayside and good people like you would triumph. That's what you thought, isn't it? Oops.